The American Library Association has come a long way from Marion the Librarian. Their new president, Emily Drabinsky, was a featured speaker at the Socialist Conference of America. Yeah, that's right. The Socialism 2023 conference featured the top librarian in the nation. And get a load of what she had to say. Uh, but I think your point that public education needs to be a site of socialist organizing, I think libraries really do too. And that happens, I haven't seen that for the person who's working in libraries, but I think there's a real opportunity here to both connect what's happening in public education, what's happening in libraries, but also we need some help in the, in the libraries, we need to be on the agenda of socialist organizing. So. Socialist organizing in your public libraries. And yes, that means, as you just heard, in your school libraries, your public school libraries. Carlin Borisenko was the journalist who found that, created that undercover recording. And boy, Carlin, you had to sit for three days through that stuff. You should get a sort of hazard pay for this. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Well, well, thank you. Yes, I did go to the Socialism uh, 2023 conference. I sat through three straight days of presentations. And, you know, I didn't get hazard pay, but I did get a really nice steak dinner for myself when it was all over. There you go. Like the capitalist that you are. By the way, uh, what you can do instead of giving uh, Carlin hazard pay, you can go join her Substack. It's called Actively Unwoke, and we appreciate that perspective. So tell me about Emily Drabinsky. You've done quite a bit of research on her as well. We shouldn't be surprised. She brags about the fact that she's a Marxist. Yeah, absolutely. Emily does brag about the fact that she was a Marxist librarian elected to lead the American Library Association. But what's actually really interesting about this is Emily was originally scheduled to be a speaker at the conference, but but the clip I got of her was not actually of her speaking. It was in a Q&A session. Oh. So the way that the socialism conferences work is they do about half of a 90-minute session of a panel of people talking about what they want to talk about, and then anyone in the audience can get up and go up to a microphone and say whatever they want to say. Uh. And I just happened to be in the session where Emily went up to the microphone and said what she said. And when she says, and I just want to be clear here, she specifically said that she wants libraries in public schools to be a place of socialist organizing. That's pretty unambiguous about what her intentions are. Oh, it's completely unambiguous. And, and you know, I was honestly shocked that she said it, but I wasn't at the same time because the Socialism Conference is a conference for the greatest and, and biggest socialist organizers in the country. They all come together. There's hundreds of them there, and they spend several days talking about socialist organizing and how they can use institutions like libraries, like public schools, to advance their Marxist ideology. And so in that context, it is actually completely, it is completely believable that Emily would come out and and say that she wants libraries to be a site of socialist organizing, even though that's something that she wouldn't say more publicly. She also said that schools and libraries are, you know, the focus of such relentless attacks from the right wing. Well, no wonder she's specifically saying that she wants them to be a site of socialist organizing. And I, I mean, I know this is splitting hairs, but librarians by definition are responsible for banning books, right? They're the ones who decide which books are allowed and which aren't allowed in the libraries. And it turns out the way they've been going about their business in recent years, they're banning books that don't fit in with the left wing agenda, with the Marxist organizing agenda. Yeah, that's very true. But I would caution everyone to stop paying so much attention to to the book bans and, and focusing on that, because what the socialists are doing is they're actively taking over all of the major institutions in the country, the public schools, the libraries, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The books are actually the least relevant part of what they're doing. Hmm. They're having meetings. They're having discussion groups. They're having classes. I have a clip that's going to be released later today of an educator at the University of Arizona talking about how she's using the University of Arizona to teach students Marxism wow. and, and literally brought one of the students to the conference. And so the books are actually the very least of our concern right now. The institutions are what we should be focusing on. Uh, well, I will look forward to seeing that release as well. I mean, three days worth of attending these the Socialist Conference must give you a lot of stories that you're about to uh, gracious with. Yeah, absolutely. There's actually going to be several stories about this idea of a smuggler pedagogy or fugitive pedagogy. Mm -hmm. This came up in several sessions about education. And what this is, is the Marxists are actively planning how to get around state anti-CRT laws by basically zooming in out of state teachers so that they can bring uh, CRT and these other ideas into the classroom in states like Florida, where it has been specifically banned. And they're calling it fugitive pedagogy. There was an entire session about it. And I'll be 
they're releasing more information about that. So let's just be clear, even when parents and taxpayers get organized and they elect a new school board at the local level, or even as you mentioned in California, elect a governor and a state legislature that actually does something about this curriculum, does something about the leftist creep that we've seen in our government funded schools, they're going to ignore it anyway. They're just going to they're, they're just going to spit in the face of all of the voters and the taxpayers and and do whatever they want. That's exactly right. They do not care what the law is. They were actively planning to break the law throughout the entire conference, which is why I didn't feel so bad about recording them, to be honest about it. Um, and they're very open about it. They're very brazen. They are not going to pay attention to any of these things and, and respect the institutions at all. I would like to get back to Emily Drabinsky, though. It's what caught our eye. And here she is, the president of the American Library Association. My understanding is that a couple of states are already entertaining uh, uh, withdrawing their participation in the American Library Association. It's not a mandatory thing. Uh, states don't right. have to send money to this group. Schools don't have to be affiliated with them. Uh, do you think this is going to make a difference in those discussions? Oh, I absolutely do. I actually talked with Dan Kleiman last night, who is the head of the World Library Association, which is an association that got set up to compete essentially with the American Library Association. And he thinks that this clip is going to be really valuable in inspiring more state library associations to leave. The Montana State Library Association is left. The Texas State Library Association is left. I would encourage all state library associations to cut and run, defund the ALA, because the intentions of the person leading it are very clear. And I'll tell you what, too. She had an entourage at the conference. There were people running around talking to other people on her behalf. I overheard it a couple times. And so it's not just the person at the very top. The entire institution is infected with these ideas. And th so the only recourse we have is to leave and go start something new. Whenever we talk about organizations like this, American Library Association or the teachers unions and such, you always hear from people, parents particularly, who say, well, my kid's teacher isn't like that. My school's library isn't like that. And that may be so. But as long as these are the people who are in charge of driving the agenda, who are actually uh, the presidents of these organizations, isn't it incumbent on all of those good teachers, good librarians to publicly disavow them? Shouldn't they be speaking out more? Yes, I would say for the few good ones that exist, they absolutely should be. But what people need to understand is the socialists and the Marxists took over the schools of education 50 years ago. And what that means is they have now trained two generations of teachers in their ideology. And those teachers may not even realize what they're teaching. Hmm. So the, although your child's teacher might be a very nice person, and I'm sure they are, they are absolutely advancing these ideas. They just might be like sleeper agents where they don't even know what they're teaching, but they're still teaching Marxism. Yeah, and that goes back to the teachers' institutions as well, the teachers' colleges, yes, where it's a big exactly. part of that pedagogy. Exactly, yes. And, and and I'll tell you what, too, if you want to look at the craziest stuff coming out of education, Columbia University Teachers College, this is where the Frankfurt School set up shop when they came to the United States, and they graduate some of the, the most far-left teachers in the country. So if you any of you have uh, teachers from Columbia, keep an eye on them. And you would know, because you got your doctorate in psychology. In fact, you are uh, uh, Dr. Carlin Borisenko, and I appreciate you exposing this stuff. This is what we need more of. Your Substack is enlightening, to say the least. Thanks for joining us on this. Thank you so much for having and me. And let us know about your next uh, exclusives. We want to highlight it here for sure. I will keep in touch. The Substack is actively unwoke, and uh, we like the sound of that. Carlin Borisenko, keep an eye on her. There's more to come. You're watching O'Connor tonight. It's the Salem News Channel.